from the studios of Adventist World Radio in Pune. A very warm welcome to you. This is the international service in English from Adventist World Radio in Pune. On our broadcast today, we have music followed by a story for children. With more music coming in, you will also hear a short message from God's word. This is Maureen. I'm your host Sharad and you are listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. Let's begin our program with a song. listening to Adventist World Radio the voice of hope from Pune India and now it's time to hear a story how martin served his master story by mrs suniti morris madho dear friends today i'm going to tell you a story entitled how martin served his master the great russian writer count tolstoy has given us a thrilling account of how a cobbler martin by name served his master he was a very poor man 
but a very devoted Christian. He lived in a humble shop and had the poorest daily fare. One night after he had eaten his supper, he took his New Testament from the shelf and read a while by his dim light as was his custom. Growing weary, he bent his head forward and rested it on his hands, meditating on what he had read and wishing it were possible for Christ to visit him. He must have fallen asleep, for presently he thought he heard a voice say, Martin, I shall visit you tomorrow. Watch for me. He sat up quickly and looked around. No one was there in the room, but he heard the voice distinctly. The next morning after his breakfast, Martin put his small shop in good order and seated himself so that as he worked he could glance up to the street and see the feet of those who passed by his window. He had recognized people by the boots he had made or repaired for them. Martin watched eagerly for some strange footwear. The day was bitterly cold and snow was falling. Presently an old man in a thin coat came along shoveling the snow away. He stopped in front of Martin's window and blew on his hand to warm them and shifted from one foot to the other. Martin sprang up the steps to the door and invited the old man to come in and warm himself. Then quickly he made a hot drink for him. When the man had gone wishing blessings on Martin as he left, Martin seated himself again at his work and watched out of the window anxiously. By and by an old woman with apples appeared in the street and Martin saw a b young boy go up and shyly steal an apple from her. But she caught him and there followed a big commotion. Martin hurried up the steps to the streets again and made peace between the two, trying to help the woman to be forgiving and the boy to be honest. When they left, the boy was carrying her apples for her and both were talking happily. All day long, Martin worked and watched out of the window from time to time. Towards evening, a rather young woman with a baby in her arm came in front of the sh shop window. She was so cold, she was blue, her thin shawl was wrapped around the child. Martin went up his steps again and beckoned the woman to come in and warm herself. While she and her little child were seated before the fire, he busied himself preparing something hot to drink. Then he opened the old chest and took out several small garments that had belonged to a little child of his who had died long before. The woman accepted them and the piece of money he put it in her hand with thankfulness, wished him many blessings and left. The day was at its close, but still Christ had not come to visit him. After he had drunk his warm drink, he took the holy scriptures from the shelf, put on his glasses and began reading. I was hungry and he gave me meat. I was thirsty and he gave me drink. I was a stranger and he took me in, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and he visited me. I was in prison and he came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when was thee hungry and I fed, fed thee? Or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in? Or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Martin bent his head forward and rested it on his arm. He must have fallen asleep, for presently he thought he saw the form of the old man he had taken in and the warm morning. 
the apple woman and the boy and the mother and the child all smiling and nodding at him from the shadowy corner of the room then he heard a voice say in as much as he have done it unto one of the least of this my brethren ye have done it unto me martin sat up suddenly and the old man the apple woman and the boy and the mother and the child had vanished from the shadowy corner then martin realized that christ had indeed visited him that day and he had not recognized him thank you for a inspiring story friends god's word is our guide to success it teaches us the truth and equips us with the skills and understanding to live life to the fullest indeed this honesty jealousy anger hatred revenge avarice prejudice selfishness and exploitation are shown to be factors which destroy peace within the individual in relationship and in society dear listener love understanding forgiveness reconciliation acceptance of one's fault generosity personal commitment to justice and peace are upheld as values which can guide a young person throughout life and bring peace and harmony on earth when they are practiced by all well friend to learn more on god's word you're welcome to write to us on adventist world radio post box number 17 pune 41101 maharashtra india you can also email us on adventist media center at gmail.com do follow these programs on our website that is awr.org/english program before you hear god's word here's another song every day they pass me by i can see it in their eyes empty people filled with care headed who knows where on they go the silent cries only jesus he Can 
time to hear God's word. Dear listener, a life lived by the Spirit is the highest level of Christianity. There is a difference between the natural man and spiritual man. In the first Corinthians chapter 2 verses 14 and 15, we read that the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God and he is not able to understand them as they are spiritually discerned, but a spiritual man discerns all things. Let's segregate spirit, the soul, and the body. But first, let's talk about the spirit. The spirit has to do with man's spiritual nature. God created man in his own image, meaning that God endowed man with divine faculty, whereby he unlike animals can commune with God. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27 describes the spirit of man as the Lord's lamp through which uh, divine light and understanding is imparted to man. Job chapter 32 verse 8 says, There is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Let's look at the word soul. When God breathed into the first man's nostrils the breath of life, man became a living soul. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Soul represents the inner man and expresses the characteristics of his personality. The soul is the seat of man's emotions and thoughts, man's likes and dislikes, desires, feelings, impressions and affinities are related to his, to his soul. Dear listener, the body. The body is the outward physical structure which holds man's soul and spirit. It serves as the vehicle to carry out the orders of or commands of man's soul and spirit. When the ungenerated soul is in control, man fulfills his physical needs to satisfy his natural impulses, even to the extent of debasing it to the level of an animal. When God's Spirit enters man's heart, the spirit of man which was dead in sin becomes alive and the body becomes the temple of the Spirit. Dear listener, to be a holy vessel, an instrument of of righteousness to serve and glorify God. Romans chapter 6 verses 1 to 19. Before we look into the spiritual man, let's look at the natural man first. The Greek word that refers to the natural man is psychic, which means soul. It deals with man's emotion, thoughts and actions. The natural man is a social moral and cultural being and his actions and conducts are dedicated uh, to his soul. He is governed by his feelings, thoughts and impressions. Although he has religious inclinations, he is self-centered and self-willed. Therefore, the natural man should not be confused with the spiritual man. Natural man has only religious experiences, being religious and being spiritual are two different things. In the natural man, the soul dominates his actions. He cannot be receptive to the realities of the Spirit of God, that is the Holy Spirit. Being born with the sin nature, he is spiritually dead until he allows God to quicken his spirit by receiving Christ as his personal Savior from sin. Friends, Unfortunately, this is the condition of most Christians today, for whom Christianity is just another religion. The emphasis is on the edifices and membership, preacher's eloquence, scripture reading, prayer meetings, social activities and music to entertain and satisfy the soul. The majority of churchgoers are not spiritual, not born of the spirit, but soulish, religious and are dominated by a desire for material gains and social status. Dear listener, the spiritual man. Truly, the spiritual man is indwelt and con controlled by the God's Spirit. 
His soul does not influence or dominate him. The spiritual man is receptive to the light the Holy Spirit imparts. He is always open to the correction and discipline. He does not compare himself with others. He orders his life according to the will of God. He is not obstinate or rebellious. His spirit is penitent and concrete. He seeks God's forgiveness for every fault he commits. My dear friend, the spiritual person is always loving, considerate, and compassionate towards others. He is not deceived by outward appearances and persuasive arguments. He recognizes the hidden motives of people. He knows that the needs of the soul can be uh, never met through human efforts and religious means. He believes that only the Holy Spirit can meet and fulfill the longings of the soul when he lives a life of total surrender to Christ. My dear friend, to experience inner harmony, man's soul and spirit must fulfill their distinctive roles which are ordained by God. For the spiritual man, what is visible, natural, is transitory. Only when God's spirit is in control of man's spirit, he can exclaim with joy, My soul praises the Lord, not myself, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, as a deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Psalms 42, verse 1 and 2. Dear friend, we can know Christ personally through the light imparted by the Holy Spirit and our relationship with Him will grow as we get to know Him better. We will no longer see the natural things through our eyes. We will no longer be attracted to the worldly things and desires. My friend, the visible natural must give way to the invisible and that is spiritual. If we are to grow into stature of Christ, Someone has said the visible be compared to a mirror whose purpose is to reflect whatever image may be projected upon it. But more important than the reflected image is the real object itself. The invisible is the reality of what is reflected on the visible mirror. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 11 and 12. The Apostle Paul says, we are not to stop at that which is seen, but to go on to the unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. For one who has been translated from the visible to the invisible, from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, the realities of the rim of the light are incomparable and with the realities of the natural rim. A life lived by the Spirit is the highest level of Christianity, whereas a life without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is soulish, one that is centered on the self. Sadhu Sundar Singh said, We are born in the natural world, but we should learn to live in the supernatural world of God. The only hope for this world is true spirituality in our way of life. Dear friend, woe to those who call evil good. Isaiah 5 verse 20. Dear listener, may God bless you with his Holy Spirit and may we all be drawn more closer to Jesus so we can glorify him and praise him forever. God bless you dear listener again. Let's pray. Our creator and sustainer of our lives. We come to you with thankful hearts for giving us life. We believe you are our creator, God. We believe you are a God of love and sacrifice. We invite the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we can be like Jesus. Bless us with your Holy Spirit so that we can glorify and praise you for this beautiful life that you have given for each one of us and the salvation which we can obtain through faith in Jesus Christ. In His holy name we pray. Amen. With this, 
We have almost come to the end of our broadcast. To know more on God's Word, you are always welcome to write to us on Adventist World Radio, Post Box No. 17, Pune, 411-001, Maharashtra, India. You may also email us on Adventist Media Center at gmail.com. We also invite you to visit our website for these programs and that is awr.org slash English program. This is your host Sharad. And I'm Maureen signing off from Adventist World Radio. Do join us again along with your family and friends. Until then we wish you goodbye. And God bless you.